Hi there, science fans. Welcome to another episode of Science and Other Stuff for Senior Citizens. My name is Dan Casciano. If you like these COVID-19 videos, please subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to be informed of future videos. In my last video, I described the human immune system and how it responds to COVID-19 infection. One of the viewers of that video sent me a message asking if I could explain the cellular immunity response in more detail and in a more understandable way. So in this video, I will try to meet the viewer's request because understanding the cellular immune response is very important and will be discussed in detail in the next video on the exciting COVID-19 recent medical advances. First, a review of the many organ systems that make up the complex human immune system. The bone marrow is the organ that supplies many of the cells that make up the innate and adaptive immune cellular response. For an in-depth description of these two responses, please refer to the previous video in this series. You are probably familiar with the white blood cells called B and T lymphocytes that originate in the bone marrow. Although both of these lymphocyte types are derived from stem cells residing in the bone marrow, the immature T lymphocytes circulate to the thymus, and there they become fully functional T lymphocytes. I will describe how each of these cell types defend us from invading organisms such as viruses and other pathogens. This cartoon shows the complexity of the cellular response. However, I plan to simplify the description of the body's cellular immune response. There are two types of immunity, innate and adaptive. Innate immunity quickly responds to general threats. This response consists of physical barriers such as the skin, chemical barriers such as mucus, and cellular defenses that include macrophages, natural killer cells, and other types of white blood cells. Adaptive immunity, or acquired immunity, responds to specific threats like COVID-19, influenza A or B. This process of acquired immunity is the basis of vaccination. Adaptive immunity includes two types of responses, humoral and cellular. I will concentrate on the cellular response, which kicks in after this COVID-19 virus escapes the innate immune defense system. Unlike the innate response, which is immediate upon entry of the virus into the cell, the cellular response is slower and is usually initiated within 24 to 48 hours after the exposure to the virus. The cellular response is mediated by B and T lymphocytes. As already mentioned, these two types of lymphocytes are formed in the bone marrow from a bone marrow stem cell. The stem cell transforms or changes into a progenitor lymphocyte that then transforms into the B and T lymphocytes. This slide indicates how a B or T cell is activated. The cell in this slide represents the many circulating B or T lymphocytes in the blood. On the surface of each of these cells is a specific membrane receptor that recognizes a specific pathogen, like a bacteria or a virus. In this cartoon, there are eight different receptors that I've represented on a single cell for the sake of simplicity. In reality, each individual lymphocyte would have a single unique receptor. As you can see, the COVID-19 virus is recognized because its surface spike protein fits into only one of these receptors. So the lymphocyte with the COVID recognition site becomes activated setting off a cascade of molecular defense mechanisms directed at fighting and destroying that pathogen. This slide shows one of the functions of an activated T cell, that is a T cell that has recognized an invader and sets about removing it from the body. Cells within our bodies communicate with each other through chemicals they produce. Different cell types produce different chemical messengers these chemical messengers generally indicate to various cell types that their neighborhood is trouble-free, or they send messages to indicate danger. The activated T cell depicted in this slide synthesizes chemical messengers called chemokines that communicate to an activated B cell. The message that is sent indicates that there is danger to the body because of a foreign invader. 
Upon receipt of these messages, the activated B cell differentiates or changes to a cell type called the plasma cell. In turn, the plasma cell begins synthesizing and excreting specific antibodies into the blood that neutralize or destroy the foreign invader or pathogen. This slide shows that in addition to the activated B cell clonally expanding to form plasma cells that produce specific antibodies, the activated T cell clonally expands to produce memory T cells. Unlike the B cell production of antibodies, the T memory cells retain their function to recognize a foreign invader, sometimes for many years after the initial exposure. However, most antibodies protect the body from specific pathogens for much shorter periods of time. This is the reason we require a vaccine to stimulate production of COVID-19 specific antibodies. There are indications that some T memory cells remember certain types of coronaviruses for up to 17 years, thus retaining the ability to stimulate B cells to once again produce antibodies to this pathogen. We will address this phenomenon in an upcoming video. This slide shows the infection process of COVID-19. In the cartoon on the left, the virus recognizes the ACE2 receptor and binds to it, allowing entry of the virus into the cell to make more virus. This process results in the death of the cell and the spread of the newly synthesized virus. If the individual had previously been infected by the same virus, that individual would have T lymphocyte memory cells that would then recognize the viral infected cell and would activate B lymphocytes to produce antibodies that would neutralize that virus. The cartoon on the right shows how the antibody synthesized by the B lymphocyte binds to the spike protein, preventing it from binding to the ACE2 receptor. This results in the inactivation of the virus, thereby inhibiting infection. In the absence of a vaccine, we must wash our hands, physically distance at least 6 to 10 feet, and wear a mask. For more information about science, visit my website at www.dcasciano.com. If you have any specific questions or would like me to develop a video on a science subject, leave that in the comments below or email me at dan at dcasciano.com. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell if you wish to be informed when I upload a new video. Thank you for watching Science and Other Stuff for Senior Citizens. Bye.